from the book of Deuteronomy. We'll read from chapter 25 and verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 4. He shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. If brothers dwell together, and one of them dies, and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go in to her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of his dead brother, that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. But if the man does not um, want to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brother in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him. But if he stands firm and says, I do not want to take her, then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders, remove his sandal from his foot, spit in his face, and answer and say, So shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house and his name shall be called in Israel the house of him who had his sandal removed. If two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the genitals, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall not pity her. You shall not have in your back different ways weights a heavy and a light you shall not have in your house differing measures a large and a small you shall have a perfect and just weight a perfect and just measure that your days may be lengthened in the land which the lord your god is giving you for all who do such things all who behave unrighteously are an abomination to the lord your god Remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt, how he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks, all the stragglers at your rear, when you were tired and weary, and he did not fear God. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around, and the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess as an inheritance, that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You shall not forget. This is a, a commandment which is well known, is that you shall not muzzle an ox while it trades out the grain. So when a farmer has an ox um, and he cultivates the, his field, he won't um, it, it won't hinder him from the things that he's doing. Of course, the Apostle Paul interprets this verse through the Spirit, as we are trying to do through the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, because I repeat that the Old Testament has been given to us for our own teaching, and from the Old Testament we receive teaching only as long as we see as we look at the Old Testament, which I would dare say that it is it's cruel, it's very strict, the law is very heavy for any man to uh, take it on. But we have to take two things into consideration that no man could ever submit himself and be sanctified and be saved through the law. Because the law was given to man so that the will of God may be revealed to him, the one that is good, pleasing and perfect, and also to reveal the sins of man. And uh, God knew that a man could not be saved through the law. It was impossible. 
nevertheless God um, with this extraordinary law that he has for his creation uh, that is created perfectly according to his image um, which was destined to become um, to uh, like him he says that he didn't spare his only begotten son but he sent him on the earth and the son uh, of God who became flesh he accepted this calling of God and he came down on the earth joyfully so God sent he continues to send Jesus Christ to humanity to people to every man uh, individually to every family and especially he sends him to the church of God which is the house of the living God the ground and pillar of truth and not only that but he also appointed Jesus Christ above all authorities and principalities every authority that is in heaven and on earth has been given to Christ and he has also appointed Christ as a head um, in the church so my dear brethren most certainly God sends Christ into our personal life what's difficult and hard uh, um, which is what is questionable is whether we receive him those who have received Christ in their personal life to them God gave the authority to become children of God hairs of God and hairs together of Jesus Christ if they'll continue to the end uh, to continue to accept and seek and wait for Jesus Christ to intervene in their lives because a man only through Jesus Christ can he truly be free and only with the teaching of Jesus Christ can he know the path in which he has to walk to know what is good and what is bad so that he may choose what is good and reject what is bad and only with the guidance of Jesus Christ can a man acknowledge the path in which he should walk for that reason God very simply um, speaking to the people who accept Christ, who receive him, he says that I will give you prudence, I will teach you the way in which you should walk, I will counsel you, and my eyes will be upon you to protect you. And this cannot happen rather with, G with God the Father through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. So it's extremely important for each one of us to know that God has appointed or forgive me God he has appointed uh, to our disposal um, uh, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ has um, given to our disposal um, the Holy Spirit the advocate of truth so that the man can be taught and can be led and also receive power from on high through the Holy Spirit so that he may be able to do what he has to do and not just uh, power but also revelation because the Holy Spirit leads us unto the whole truth and more specifically uh, on that verse you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain the Apostle Paul explains by saying that because the Bible says that you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads and it says that um, worthy is the the minister of his work and even more in detail the Apostle Paul explains by um, interpreting uh, through the Spirit of Christ through the Holy Spirit this verse by saying that because in the law of Moses it is written that you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain and by interpreting that he says does God care about um, ox about an ox or does he say this for us because it was written for us that he who works who plows he should uh, do this in hope uh, 
that he will enjoy from the fruit of that field and he who um, who takes um, um, the fruit to have hope so the man who works has hope that God will prosper him in whatever he does as long as he works according to the will of God and as long as he works um, wisely um, by uh, being wise uh, by Christ as long as he is taught the way in which he should um, walk being advised about his hidden um, issues knowing that God protects him and this is a big truth brethren because a man cannot and he does not know what to do and he cannot do what he has to do for that reason it's extremely important not to do whatever we like because we will make m mistakes and to do whatever we and whatever we think we were gonna make greater mistakes and with these mistakes we get ourselves into painful uh, situations in our um, in our life in our family and in the church but we should seek God because everyone should know that whoever seeks God God becomes a reward to those who diligently seek him you will receive a reward from God only when you seek Him. And the Word of God says that the Lord commanded that those who preach the gospel to uh, to live out of it. This is a commandment of the Lord, which has two interpretations. The one interpretation is that I if if I'm preaching for example to leave um, out because I preach the gospel out of you that is you should take care of my um, welfare but the Apostle Paul has a better interpretation who says that I am waiting while preaching the gospel not to leave out of um, those whom God sent me but out of him who sent me to them how nice this differentiation that is and where does he support that is because to preach the gospel it says to me it's not something to boast in I do not boast in that Because what happened to me, it didn't come out of my own initiative. I didn't say that I become a preacher and a minister of the gospel. I was a persecutor and a blasphemer when the Lord called the Apostle Paul. I would dare say that he was um, living his life in sin and iniquity. Um, in comparison to the will of God but God who does not see the appearance as we do but God who sees the hearts of men he so a heart that was holy and clean that would accept and receive Christ so he visited him and this the um, visitation to him was to humble him because he was extremely proud he was a teacher he had studied um, on the feet of Gamaliel he was a man who had power and authority he was a man with abilities and skills and he enjoyed um, honor and respect from all the Israelites and as a result of the, all these things he became a terrible persecutor of the church and a blasphemer for Christ and disrespectful because he used to capture believers and force them to blaspheme Christ no man 
could discern um, the depths of his heart rather than Christ who knows the depths of the hearts of man and also their minds so he knows the will and the desires of people and also their power and when Christ visited him he fell down blinded and he heard the voice of God he said so so why uh, are you persecuting me I said Lord who are you to whom I'm persecuting I'm persecuting this heretic people who are saying weird things and he said you are persecuting me because whoever touches the child of God it is as if he puts his finger and to the apple of the eye of God and after being um, humiliated and humbled humility goes before glory so after this humility that the Apostle Paul um, experienced for three nights and three days he was blind and he was praying and these three days and nights were enough uh, so that the Lord would send Ananias to him to pray his eyes to be opened and be filled uh, with the Holy Spirit and after that Paul's soul became a different person he became a completely different person when God regenerated him and he gave him the power of the Holy Spirit he became a completely different person and in fact God trained him and he taught him um, uh, the gospel and afterwards he sent him and now that man says that I do not have um, anything to boast to because this didn't happen out of my own initiative the preaching of the gospel but this happened um, while I didn't have any kind of intention to do that God did that uh, by force in my life and for that reason glory belongs to the Lord and for that reason um, I cannot uh, boast in preaching but what I boast in to preach the gospel um, without expenses that is to hope that Jesus Christ has taken care of my life completely and in everything how nice that it is to boast in such a way he who boasts he should boast only in the Lord how nice that it is to boast that the Lord has taken care of my life completely does this happen to everyone no only to those who dedicate their life to Christ in everything they they deliver it to him they go to the Lord and say Lord and we should do that brethren often Lord I'm, I'm giving the rest of my life to you I'm giving my family to you I'm giving everything uh, to you then God intervenes and not only does he give you wisdom and prudence and he counsels you but he also protects you in everything and then that man uh, being humble walks from glory to glory and from faith to faith so the Apostle Paul made that nice decision I do not want to depend on people and we should also make that decision brethren and the way he interprets it is that being free from all and why is he free from all people because he enslaved himself to Christ when a man testifies and he says that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my God he testifies that he has a Lord and he submits himself to him and he also obeys in him and he has a God who takes care of him and he and, and he loves his God how nice that it is how nice that this is my dear brethren it's something that we should uh, desire to say Lord I'm giving my life completely to you and what God will do is wonders he will do amazing things God does not look with partiality and we shouldn't stop on that uh, I am also giving to you my family do whatever you think I'm also 
uh, we should uh, give everything to him one by one in detail. I'm giving you my family, I'm giving you my health, everything. I'm giving you my children, my parents. I'm I'm giving them, delivering them to you. I can do nothing. And that's the truth. We can offer nothing to anyone. We can do nothing good to anyone. And Christ confirms that by saying that you can do nothing without me. And something else that God showed me lately is that we should also um, uh, dedicate our brothers to the Lord one by one. It's so nice to show your love for your brother because this is a commandment, love one another. And how will I love um, the, that person? I will give him to the Lord and I will pray to him that he may fix his heart and love me back because if I won't pray that God may fix the heart of my wife to, to be able to love me then this will never happen because we're married people if I won't pray for my children for my daughters-in-law my brothers-in-law my grandchildren and my uh, brothers and sisters to love me this cannot happen and it's not because it's others uh, other people's fault it's because we make mistakes we make things that are not good that are not right and we don't realize that. But if before I I get into a life of a man with my personal op opinion, either this is my family or the church or his in my neighborhood, if I don't do that in the name of Jesus Christ, as he says, asking you shall receive in order to fix the heart of that person, then this cannot happen, and neither mine can be fixed as well. So, you can see how important it is to dedicate everything to God. Besides, God sends Him to us. And may I say this differently? God sent Jesus Christ into my life to take care of everything, to bless me, to teach me, and to prepare me for the rapture of the church. If I uh, comprehend and acknowledge that, then uh, I would be a fool not to get advantage of that and not use it. I would be a fool to say that I'm going to make it on my own. I can do nothing on my own. He says, without me, you can do nothing. You can see how important it is to dedicate everything to Christ and do this consciously. So now the Apostle Paul, who dedicates his life to Christ, who trusts that he will live his life um, in the Gospel through Jesus Christ, he says, being free uh, from all. And how, how, how come? It's because Christ has delivered me. Because only whomever Christ delivers, he will be truly free. So being free from all. Now, I have enslaved myself to everyone because I care only for one thing to gain people for Christ to gain most of them that's our mission to gain people for Christ not for us not to make them our, fu our fans but we should gain people for Christ to we should say from within our heart Lord please give him to me Lord please get into his life bless him and save him there isn't greater joy than that to see a man um, to see a man with your uh, prayer and life Christ to save him so the Apostle Paul from Saul he became the Apostle Paul um, having gained this mindset, the specific mindset which is the mindset of Christ. He has everything dedicated to Christ and then Christ takes care everything into my life. God does much greater, more important things than what we ask of or think. 
according to his all wisdom and uh, all might. But now let's get into something else that the Word of God says. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. Her husband's brother shall go into her, take her as his wife, and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. For what reason? So that he may build up the house of his brother. Um, and in order to understand that, and the message that God gives is that all the Israelites were recorded according to individuals and families and genealogies and tribes. And I repeat again, according uh, as families. Someone who wasn't recorded, registered, he couldn't be considered an Israelite. He might have been a proselyte, but, and, and that's how they do it to, to this day. So they are registered in the book of Israel. In the Church of Christ we are also registered. Our names are written in the book of life. And it's not just my name, but all of the brothers and sisters, and not only of my relatives, relatives but all of my brothers and sisters. And a duty of someone, if if someone uh, dies, his name she shouldn't be uh, obli obliterated from the book of Israel. So, though it was prohibited by law, the Word of God says that it is not allowed, and this is mentioned in the book of Leviticus, It, it says that it's prohibited for someone to get married to the wife of his brother as long as he's alive. But when he dies, then things are different. He has to build up the name of his brother and the family of his brother. So he has to uh, get married to his a brother's wife and build up uh, her house so that his name may continue to be registered in the book of Israel. Much greater responsibility we have to build up the families of our uh, brothers, the life of our brothers that our names may continue to be in the book of life. I have appointed you um, a guard of your brother, says the word of God. I've appointed you a guard. So not only is it extremely bad to offense a brother and make him go away from the book of life with my uh, bad behavior with my words and it says that if someone offends one of the list of the brethren then it is better for him to put a milestone around his neck and throw himself into the sea rather than to offend one of the list of this people of course, in the Bible it says that the offenses will come, most definitely. And why does God allow this to happen? It's so that those who are approved uh, to come out, if you suffer, suffer one another in love. If you become angry, if your heart is filled with bitterness from the mistake, from the foolishness, of your brother then you are not approved and you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven if we are not approved then we cannot um, take part into the rapture of the church for that reason the word of God says uh, study to present yourself 
a man approved to God. So strive to do that. How? By becoming ministers that are not put to shame. You shouldn't be ashamed for what you did, but whatever you do should be for your glory and to say it even better for the glory of God. And the way you're going to do that is by rightly dividing the Word of God. So through the Word of God you will become a minister that is not put to shame and then you will be an approved man before God. So he who is approved not only does he not offense anyone but the most important thing is that he, he does not receive any offense and Christ says uh, blessed is he who uh, is not offended in me but if in the Old Testament someone wouldn't accept to build up the house of his brother then the law was strict and this was would lead to the humiliation of that person it despised him then the wife of the dead man would go to the elders and they would call that man who had a duty to build up the house of his brother and if that man denied to build up the house of his brother then this um, woman would take uh, his sandal would spatter in him and forever he would be despised in the people of Israel as the house of him who had his sandal removed my brothers and sisters if you want to be glorious in the presence of God um, of course this is by grace through faith and to be blessed then take care that you may build up and not destroy you should build up according to the commandment of God love one another as he has loved you by suffering one another by considering by uh, um, esteem, to esteem others higher than yourself by submitting yourself um, uh, to others in humility these are commandments of glory for that reason in the church there are people that are despised and uh, they are being despised by the Lord because only the Lord is the one who commands people in the church and who are those who are despised in the family, in a house, in the church and in, in the local church or in general at work, at your work do you know what it means people not to respect you? he's like the one whose house um, the house, house is the house of him who had his sandal removed respect is not something that is demanded by other it's something that is given by God nor can it be gained it's something that is given by God every, uh, every good thing and every perfect gift comes from above from the Father of Lights and respect um, is something that is a gift from God it's a good gift, it's a perfect gift. I cannot make you and force you to respect me. I cannot make anyone to appreciate me. But God can command me to your heart so that you may respect me. But for God to do that and you to respect me, I have to strive uh, and to fight not only for you but for everyone to be built up to build up his house not only should I not becoming an obstacle uh, but I should take it away and build up then God is pleased he trusts me he gives me more grace and mercy 
and so there is respect and appreciation by others. You should remember, brethren, whose fault is it? It's my fault. From the moment that I say uh, that either out in my heart or out in the open that it's his fault, then I have lost it. There's no respect nor appreciation on that. No matter what happens, no matter what bad thing happens, I shouldn't try to find the um, escaping goat nor a man uh, who is responsible for that. If I do that, then I've lost everything. If I say, Lord, it's my fault, because indeed it's my fault, I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not lying, it's my fault. And why is it my fault? It's because my mindset wasn't such so that God would uh, command me and protect me from mistakes and from problems. If I say that it's my fault, then this before God means that uh, I humble myself and whoever humbles himself before God, he finds grace before God and man. It's extremely important in the sight of God to take care and build up the house of your brother. It's extremely important to do that. To build up the house of your father with whom you dwell together. If brothers dwell together and one of them dies, and who is the brother who dwells with me? It's the one who is in the same church with me. I want to try to look and find other people all around. The brothers whom uh, my God has added to the same house that God has added me as well. So if I build up and how um, do I do that? It's with my behavior, with my words, with my actions and especially with my prayer. Especially with my prayer. Of course by uh, t uh, submitting myself to the Word of God and uh, that way I'll find grace before God and God will take care to commend me before all uh, powers because otherwise I give space to the devil and there's um, and as this uh, confirmation goes away then the devil gets uh, in the middle and things become even worse uh, so I should say it's my fault please forgive me Lord uh, bless him who I think that he I have the impression that he has fault he has wronged me but it's not that I am wrong that way brethren I'll find grace before God which is something that we want a third one which is uh, very serious which seems absurd to us who are Christians If two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the genitals, then you shall not, you shall cut off her hand. Your eyes shall not pity her. This is extremely serious. In order um, for that woman to defend her husband, she it gets into the most... Um, A weak part of a man we won't uh, do that we will cover the weaknesses of other people he made a mistake he is weak in faith as the Bible says he is weak in love I will not accuse him um, while he is sick this is extremely serious I will not get advantage Um, for my wife, for my children, for uh, the church to despise him completely in his weakness. In that case, God intervenes and he punishes. It's not that he humbles someone as 
in, in the previous case, but here he intervenes and he cuts the hand off. He punishes. When I see the weakness of another person, then I cover it and take care of him because I love him. Would ever a woman who loves her husband would do that? No, because uh, she could uh, uh, make him incapable of uh, um, of uh, having children. If someone uh, makes a mistake, we will not spread it out to others. Do you know what that person did or the other one? God will punish you for that because you judge and condemn and in fact you do that um, um, in that in the weakness of that person God is righteous what God wants from us is to defend those who are weak and for that reason the great reward um, is that you gave he to him who was hungry to eat, to him who is thirsty to drink, to he who is a stranger, he entertains him. He must be a stranger who has where uh, w to eat and drink, but he doesn't have where to stay. He who is uh, um, um, sick, you visit him to comfort him. He who is in prison, you, gave, you went to give him courage. We will not despise the weakness of our brother, but instead we take care of him in his weakness. Differently, the Word of God says, go you out in the in the, uh, the outer darkness because um, that's what I needed to eat and you had ab abundant and you didn't give me to eat. And they said, Lord, when we, did we do that? As long as you did that to one of the list of your brethren, you did it to me. If you didn't do um, that to any of the list of the brethren, then you didn't do it to me. This is something extremely important, which bears punishment. When we don't stand by the weakness of a person, when we don't cover the weakness of a person. This is a terrible thing. To get advantage, the weakness of another person. We see a person who is sick and we say, God is punishing you. What, is this? what are you talking about? God is not um, um, someone who punishes. Will I become? But instead, God has put me to um, stand by and support he who is weak. I'm a guard of my brother. My dear brethren, please um, look into that. Whoever, please hear this. Whoever gets advantage of the mistake and the weakness of a person, in order to insult him, to harm him and wrong him, a man, and do that in his weakness, he will be punished with strictness from God. With strictness. So if we did that, if and we made that big mistake, today we should repent. Today we should ask grace and mercy from God. Today we should say, Lord, forgive me, be merciful to me, so that this work of darkness may go away, which brings upon us punishment and strict punishment. I don't think that there is anywhere else this punishment to cut off her hand. I don't know, I, I, I don't remember. But I will look into that, but I think that this is the only part that um, her hand is cut off, which means that you won't be able to do that again. It takes away this ability from you. Why? Because you behaved in a, in a, a bad and disrespectful manner without 
respect and you got advantage of the weakness of that person and you troubled him and I repeat that this can happen with words with works and with a mindset by despising um, a person no he that person is not no he is a child of God I repeat that we can do that with words with actions and with our behavior most certainly the punishment will come upon you therefore since the Word of God tells this to us we should examine ourselves we should go to the Lord and repent I don't want God to cut off my hand and uh, this ability that I have not to be able to work I want God to help me to be able to work amen brethren for that reason today we should repent today we should ask grace and mercy from God today we should ask for the blood of Christ so that he may take away this a uh, terrible sin that's how God sees it and in that he may throw it away in the depths of the sea and us to be free to be free before God and man having two hands Amen may God help us